Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be looking at how to use external identities using a B2B scenario with SAML. Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at external identities again. Last time we looked at this was using Facebook and social identity to log onto an application that we had registered with Azure AD. So today we're going to be looking at it from a similar angle, but instead we're going to be using the B2B approach. Now with the B2B approach, what we have is a business to business relationship between our organization and some external organization. Now the external organization will have their own IDP that they will be managing and they will have their own IDs in there, their own passwords and so on inside of that, that identity provider. Now that could be any identity provider that supports one of the two protocols that are supported by AD. And these are fairly common. Those are SAML and WS Fed. Now, when you implement those various identification protocols in whatever that external IDP is you can set up a trust relationship with Azure AD and that external identity provider so that Azure AD will trust the logins from that external identity provider. And so what this allows us to do then is let the external identity provider maintain the things like who the user is, their password and the sign-on experience. But in our identity provider, we have a correlating ID that we can use to log into our application with. So whenever our user launches the application, they will be redirected to a logon screen that is used by the external identity provider, then that external identity provider will then kick us back over to the application. Just like we saw when we had social identity identities, and then we're using those to log in, but this case, we're gonna be using that external businesses identity provider. So to simulate this, what I'm going to do is set up ADFS with Azure AD and use the external identities provided by ADFS to do this. We've already used ADFS in one scenario where we used Azure AD Connect to authenticate users with ADFS. But in this case, we're going to be setting up to simulate an external identity provider. And then we're going to be importing the IDs from that external identity provider into Azure AD rather than just using it as an external login for our internal identities. So let's go over to Azure AD and set this up. I'm here in the Azure portal and I'm looking at my Active Directory on Azure, and I want to add an external identity to use SAML or WS Fed. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to external identities and click on all identity providers. And next thing I'm going to add is the new SAML WS Fed IDP here. And that's going to bring up this over here, this blade, and I'm going to select SAML for my protocol. And I'm going to put in my domain, which is going to be blaze at XYZ. I've used this for other demos, but I've kind of backed out a lot of that um, for whatever it is I was doing. And the method I want to use here is parse a metadata file. And so what you can do here is you can browse for a file. Now, if you need to get the file for your particular domain, what you can do is use a URL. And if using ADFS, you can download this file. And what this is going to look like is this for ADFS. So you have your domain and then you can get federation metadata slash 2007-06 and then federation metadata.xml. And this is going to download an XML file to my local hard drive. And then once I have that file downloaded, I'm going to come over here and upload it into Azure. So I'm going to simply select federation metadata.xml right here and then parse it. And it's going to parse the metadata out of this particular file here, and then you can click save. And once I have that done, then my domain has been added into my external identity providers. There's still some work I need to do on ADFS though, to make ADFS work with this, because this is fairly easy to set up. ADFS is in. So let's go through ADFS and look at what I need to set up there to make this work with ADFS. Okay. The next thing I need to do is configure ADFS. Now, the first thing I need to add into this is add a claims description that is going to be used by Azure Active Directory. So I'm simply going to come over here under services and click over here on claims descriptions and click add claims descriptions. Now the claims description is what I need here. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. So all I really need to do is 
paste in some values here called one of them. It's just the name. This can be anything. Persistent identifier is the name that I'm going to put in there. And I'm going to put the claims identifier right here. And this is the claim that is going to be used by Azure Active Directory that is going to be mapped to my local uh, account here inside of my Active Directory on premise. So I'm going to put that claim identifier in there and I'm going to check both of these boxes down here and then click OK. And that's going to add it to the bottom of my list called persistent identifier. So once I have that done, I then can add in my external identity provider so that I can get that two-way trust set up. So let's go ahead and look at how to do that. Okay, once I have the claims description added, I'm simply just going to add in a relying third party here. So I'm going to add in relying party trust here. And this is basically going to do what we already did on, on Azure AD, but this slide I'm doing it on ADFS. So basically I'm going to be plugging in the metadata URL from the other side into ADFS so that I can get that to a trust set up. So this is where I'm going to take the URL that is provided for Microsoft, which I'll link in the video description below, nexus.microsoftonline-p, federation metadata, SAML, and then federation metadata XML. And then I'm gonna click next, and it's gonna say some features aren't supported by ADFS, which is fine. Um, the display name is just gonna take the domain name. If you wanna use a different one, that's fine there. This one's where you can set up login policies. I'm just going to say permit everybody, but you can do by groups or by different kinds of MFA and that kind of thing if you want to set that up. And once that's all ready to go, you can see some summary type data here. It's just click through those tabs if, you want to, if you're interested in reading those. Once you have that, you're ready to go and just click next. And then once it's added, you can click close. And now the relying third party is added. There's a few things that we need to do to this though, to make this ready to use. So let's go ahead and look at how to do that. Okay. To set up a claims map, I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to edit claim insurance policy right here. And here I can add a rule. This is where I do the claims mapping between the source and destination or vice versa. So basically what this is going to do is send LDAP claims, uh, LDAP attributes as claims, which is the LDAP attributes from active directory locally here. That's the kind of rule I want to use. And there's some other ones that you can add, and we'll use one of these in just a minute. But the first we're going to send LDAP claim, LDAP attributes as claims. And the claim rule here that I'm going to use, I can just call it email, uh, attribute, whatever you want to call it. And you want to set the attribute store, which is going to be active directory. And you basically just going to map on the email address from your local active directory to the outgoing claim, which in this case is going to be an email address here. And this is going to basically send the email as part of the claim, uh, that is going to be sent over to Azure active directory so that it can use that to map onto whatever identity is inside of active directory. So once I got that, I'm going to click apply, uh, and that is ready to go. And there's one other claim that we need to have here, and I'm going to add a rule for that in just a second. Okay. The next rule I need to add here is to add in a rule that does a transformation. So transform incoming claims right here. And this is the one that's going to use that persistent identity claim description that we set up already. So basically what I'm going to do here is come in here and say, um, give it a, give it a name. And this is what we want to use for here. It's just an email transform rule. And you can set the incoming claim to email address right here. And the outgoing claim that we want to have here is the identifier for this particular user. So name ID and the format is going to be the persistent claim, persistent identifier right here for the, the actual claim that we're going to be using. So this is what's mapping onto that persistent identifier that we created at first. And you can then do pass through all claim values and simply select that as the default and hit finish and then apply that. And now this should be ready to go for the trust relationship from both sides, but I'm not quite done yet because what I need to do now is add users into Active Directory. So I've created a user here inside of Active Directory called external user, and this is the user that I want to import into Azure Active Directory. So with Azure Active Directory AD Sync, it was going to do this automatically for me, but for a relying third party, that's an external identity. I'm not going to have any kind of sync set up. So I'd have to somehow create a process to bring those users into my Active Directory. What we saw with a social login is the ability for the user to be able to create a identity inside of Active Directory based on the data that was sent over from the social login like Facebook. 
but we don't get that with this particular kind of login and this kind of external identity. So what I need to do then is create an external user inside of Active Directory or import it. But I'm going to use the utility that's built into Azure AD to do this. Okay, I'm back here in Active Directory on Azure. Let's go back to my users and I need to add the user right here. So I'm just going to hit a new user right here and I can do create user right here or I can invite a user. I'm going to invite a user here and this is where I'm going to say external user. And this is where I'm going to add in that external users account. So it's only external uh, user or external at blaze dot X, Y, Z. And this domain, because it's federated, will then use the logon from my ADFS uh, because it's registered with my external identities because of this domain right here, it will be directed to that to log in. So I'm just gonna call it external user for the login name. And of course you can turn on all these other things if you so choose, but once you have that user set up, you can click invite and that will actually kick an email over to the uh, particular user. Now, what that user then is going to do is get an uh, email address saying, hey, you've been invited to this particular uh, logon. Now, if you don't want to have to do that or go through a logon process for each user, what you can do is come in here and resend the invitation and that'll kick off a new invitation to them but it also will display this invitation URL. You don't have to have an email address set up for this. You can simply just click that and then open up a incognito window and paste it in. And once this is set up, what it's doing now is it's kicked me over to my ADFS login to log in with this user. Now, this is not Azure AD. This is ADFS.blaze.xyz now because of that domain, I am using ADFS.blaze.net to log in rather than using Azure AD because of that SAML relationship that I have set up. So if I punch in my password here, I should get kicked back over to Azure Active Directory. And it's going to say, permit this to read the various things about my user here. And I'm going to say, accept. And this will take me over to my app manager that I can use to manage the applications that I have set up for this particular user. But that's really not what I'm interested in here. Uh, what I want to do is I want to use the applications that I have registered with this already, which is the sample application that I used already. So let's uh, pull up that sample application in Visual Studio and take a look at that. I'm here inside of Visual Studio again, and I wanted to use the same sample app that I used before to log on with. And this is the sample application that we looked at whenever we did social identity logons. In this case, I'm going to use the external SAML configuration that I already have. I haven't changed anything about this application. Uh, I just wanted to review though what I have here. I have an app settings file that has my domain. And this is the default domain that I get whenever I create a tenant on Microsoft. So it says me blaze on Microsoft.com. There's my tenant ID and there's my client ID. That is the application registration. I'll link a video link in the description of this video below so that you can see how I set this all up. That's really not the thrust of this video, but I want to get the URL for this. And so I'm going to come over here to properties and come to debug and I'm going to grab this HTTPS URL right here. And I'm going to start the application. Now I'm going to launch this in an incognito window now so that I can get the login again, and it will kick me over to the login for this particular application once I use this. So the first thing it's going to do is ask me to go to log on to Microsoft, uh, microsoftonline.com. It's going to ask me what user I want to use. So I'm going to use external at blaze.xyz. And this is going to be very similar. We just saw whenever we got the invitation URL, I'm going to click next. It's going to kick me over to ADFS now, and then I can log on using ADFS. Now with this one, I'm just going to punch in the same password I used before, but instead of going back to that application management page, it should take me back to my application that I have running on my local host, because this one is already set up with ADFS. Now I didn't really have to do any kind of integrations or user maps with this particular application. I simply just needed to have my application registered with Active Directory on Azure already. And it inherited the ability to use that third party logon with my ADFS setup that I have here using SAML. So you can see that it was fairly straightforward and easy to set up but there was a lot of work that I had to do inside of ADFS to kind of get 
all the pieces of that working. But once you have that working, it's fairly easy to use. And you can just use this external identity provider for that business to business relationship like we've seen already. So thanks for watching this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. And we'll be checking out more cool stuff related to security in this ongoing security series. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com. And there you can find about services that Wintelect offers, including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Winelect on Twitter at Winelect now or at Winelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.